Great. So uh, Dave Archer from DK Training, we'll be talking about um, the modern squirrel dilemma, I believe. Um, I'll leave you to it quickly so you've got your time. Just so you know, what I'll do is I'll pop up when you've got about five, ten minutes left, just so then we can get questions in. Um, and that's your indication to, you know, speed it up a bit. Is that OK? Absolutely fine. Absolutely. Fabulous, because you're an amazing talker. We could have listened to you all day. But uh, yeah, we've got till uh, 10, where are we going? 10.50. So, but I'll pop yeah, up for you. OK. Absolutely fine. Well, Thanks, am Dave. I, am I live? You are you alive? You can right, share. Good, good morning, everybody. Um, oh God, it's Dave Archer again. Um, a lot of you may have seen me before. I've done lots of uh, presentations with uh, British Pest Control Association. Um, I started in the industry very quickly because I know we have pushed for time today. I started in the industry, believe it or not, in 1979. Um, in that time, I've obviously done practical pest control. I now do training as opposed to the practical side of it, but I'm still very, very, very interested in, in pest control. Um, right, why is that important that I started in 1979 in relation to Gray's Anatomy? Do you like that one, Gray's Anatomy? Gray's Anatomy on Gray's Scores. Oh, I thought it was good. Um, okay, the reason it's interesting is because grey squirrels, we've had quite a serious in-depth uh, discussion with Alan there. This is a bit more light-hearted, but I want to encompass all of grey squirrel control for everybody here. Newbies, oldbies, uh, you know, so just bear with me if you like. Some of it you'll know, some of it might be new to you. Right, here you go. Um, it's not a run-of-the-mill talk. I want to go into some of the bits and bobs, which perhaps are sometimes skimmed over, but it's all very prevalent nowadays to grey squirrel control. But where are we at? To me, this is, uh, uh, as the same with rodenticide resistance, a massive problem, a huge problem on lots of different levels. And the first thing to say is, uh, greys were... Well, 1876 was the first appearance of them in Hanbury Park in Cheshire. Um, that was the first release of them. Um, the jolly old Duke of Bedford was the chap. His name crops up quite a few times about what he's re released. Don't give him such a hard time. I mean, he's dead now. And in, in, in years gone by, people weren't as educated on pests and, and non-native species, which is what we're talking about here. Um, uh, they had absolutely no idea of the carnage that would be would be caused by grey squirrels. The other thing, when I just said about 1979, if you look from 1920 or 1937, really, it was illegal to release or import greys. Now, if you take that back to the late 70s, if you like, twice of my career in this industry is the time scale that we've had for these little chaps to have caused all these problems. So we're talking about a very narrow time scale here for an animal which is not only a massive problem, but is also in the Tufty Club and the Cute and Furry Animal Club, which is another thing that, great, that pest controllers are up against, and it's getting worse and worse. So it's a non-native species, which means it's an alien species. Um, special rules will apply here. And the special rules, rules are, as with, say, feral mink, gliss gliss, or your edible dormice, or rhododendrons, it cannot be re-released or reintroduced. I'm sorry, Dave, did you say rhododendrons there? I absolutely did. The plant, the bushy plant you'll see in garden centres. And if you don't believe me, go and have a look on the west coast of Scotland. It is a massive problem there. And it's our problem because we've introduced it. So your mink, your gliss gliss, your grey squirrels, and they're all problems in different ways. Um, what can we say about grey squirrels? Well, believe it or not, they still amaze, they absolutely amaze me, almost on a weekly basis of their, their boldness for sure. They're not like a, a sort of rural fox, um, where generally speaking, he will keep out of the way. Grey squirrels are as bold as you like. And even if you imagine how bold they are, believe you me, they're, they're 10 times worse than that. So what have we got? We've got an animal that doesn't care if you see it in the trees. He's often chatters and he's heavy because he's falling through the tree branches. And on a day like today, it's ideal if you're doing outdoor squirrel control, you'll certainly see the chap moving through the trees. Um, he's not doing it uh, quietly. Um, he'll, if he does see you, sometimes, as you know, he'll flick his tail up and down and he'll chatter at you. Um, 
If you are doing outdoor shooting techniques, by the way, it's perfect time, and we'll go through that in the safety aspects if we've got time, but it's a perfect time for standing still, and believe you me, after a few minutes with this bold fella, he'll soon make himself known, but just stand still and he will come out and see you. So, um, what else have we got? Well, one, one thing in this fella's downfall, he's very, very curious. He can't resist, and this isn't a metaphor, he can't resist a tunnel with light at the end. If there's a tunnel there, if it's blocked off, he's not as uh, interested in going in, but if it's got light at the other end, he has got to go through there. So you can take full advantage of that. Um, he loves maize, and maize shows up bright. It's a great color. Uh, I prefer whole, not kibbled maize. Uh, you don't want to be attracting unwanted species around by your traps. But let's just go back a second here. Um, Greys are in the cute and cuddly club. Whereas in the 70s, and I was trapping and doing a lot of shooting with greys, we now have, it's incredible really, but professionals, bear with me, in garden centres, this is not a bird box, it's your fold down, and I bought this specially, I'll reimburse the BPCA, but this is a grey squirrel feeding box and you tip it down and he sits there and he goes in and feeds and you have a good old chuckle at him. And you can get tables with pieces of maize and uh, corn cobs that you can feed it with. And everybody sits there and goes, oh, chuckle, chuckle, lovely grey squirrel. But here's the serious part. If you're the pest controller doing work next door, you're the glorified rat catcher who's also doing a bit of squirrel bashing. So be discreet. If you're saying what you're doing, or if you've got squirrels or us on the side of your truck, believe you me, in this day and age, the tide is turning. The rock stars and everybody have got more persuasion than you'll ever have. And forget your thing about non-natives and your, you, you, must, you must not re-release, which obviously you can't do. But this kind of thing is becoming more and more to the fore. And we are, <laughs> we're outnumbered, not just by the squirrels, but by the change in public perception of how good grey squirrels are. Um, right, what else have we got about them? Never underestimate their strength. Never underestimate their strength. Their sense of smell, their cunning or bites. Why do I say uh, their sense of smell and their cunning? Well, look at this one. Oh, Dave, that's just slug pellets. That's my that got to that. Certainly isn't, because this was in my wood store. And that, I was watching a grey squirrel do it, and that's why I bought it in to show you. That was a full container. And even in a wood store, the squirrel chewed in, found that, and chewed straight into it. And I can show you some other examples, and I will show you some other examples. Bear with me a second. Right, here's your, here's your test for today. We have, uh, I'll go through this trap in a minute, but this trap, here's your question, everybody. Quick question. Can a grey squirrel chew, th he can't chew through that. Yes, he might chew through mesh, but can he really chew through that type of wire? Have a look at this. That is grey squirrel damage, and that is where he's actually chewed within the space of about five minutes, I might add, chewed the weld off that and broken that, and is almost getting out of the trap. Almost getting out of the trap. He didn't get out of the trap, but he almost did. So don't underestimate them, and don't underestimate their sense of smell, incredible sense of smell. Greys can smell uh, peanuts from, I don't know, two, three hundred yards away. They'll make a direct beeline to that area. Now, this may be stuff that you already know, but it's not a bad thing to just, you know, uh, go through it again with you. Um, now, I'm not saying this just to make you laugh. It's true, but why are... <laughs> nuts? Let's talk about nuts. Um, they're, they're absolutely huge, and I don't know how they don't get strung up in trees. If they were people, so they'd be down to your knees. But catching buck grey squirrels, they're absolutely huge. And if, if you look on the internet, you'll see there's a video where one gets his bits, for want of a better nerd, he uh, caught on a fence and he can't get off the fence because these are one side and he's the other. So if you're walking down and you looked up, well, there's a site you don't see every day, but it's true, they're absolutely huge. I don't know why, they should be much smaller, but there you go. Um, yes, okay. Um, that uh, damage they can do to their environment. I find this a bit strange, really, but perhaps it's me. I'm just going to show you here, uh, hopefully, the, uh, a slide of 
Squirrel damage in trees. I cannot believe how much damage squirrels do in trees. They will do what, hang on. Uh, they will do a thing called ring barking of trees, whereby if there's any trees there, they will strip the bark, especially in the springtime showing their territory, and they'll strip the bark off the tree and they will kill that tree. And that's not only in, in ones or twos, it's in huge numbers. Um, and they will destroy the very area that they're living in. Uh, it's a strange thing, but it, it, it's, it, it's what they do, whether they're sharpening their teeth or they're doing it for territorial uh, uh, shows, we're not sure. Um, but they certainly, they certainly will uh, cause a lot of damage in trees. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment with uh, a species which is, can't be re-released, must be culled in traps, you cannot take one out of a trap and kill it. But if you kill it, you must do it in the most humane way possible. None of, no, no, as most of you know, but you know, you'll still hear about it, no drowning. And I feel very strongly about this point. If you have trapped that animal, that's your responsibility. And it doesn't matter whether it's a, a gray squirrel, a brown rat, whatever, a mink, whatever animal it is, your duty is to be as not only just on a on a, uh, a legal basis, but on a on a sort of fundamental ethical basis. Really, do it as humanely as you can. You've trapped it. You do it as humanely as you can. If your conscience says it doesn't matter, well, perhaps you're in the wrong industry. And I mean that sincerely. You know, the more you know about your species, the more that you understand it. And, and the better pest controller you will be. Um, so we'll go on to control methods as well. But what has not been used anymore? Well, there's been some confusion about this. Um, and I have checked with industry and industry standards. Warfarin has now gone and it's gone forever. Warfarin, as you know, was the only anticoagulant which was used for gray squirrel control because obviously there's no resistance with gray squirrels. So warfarin was the only product, but that has now gone. It's gone for outdoor use, it's gone for indoor use, it has gone completely. And if, I will mention it, um, any, any sort of anticoagulants, um, like Alan was saying, don't think of that as a method of control anymore. And don't just say, well, I think it's rats. You should know if it's a gray squirrel or a rat problem. And if it is gray squirrels, no anticoagulants at all. Um, the other thing which is, you may not know, but I've checked this one out in the last couple of weeks, contraceptives were being looked at for uh, gray squirrel control. Uh, it may well have worked. It may well have worked. Well, my father said they didn't, but you know, there you go. Um, the idea was a good one, but it's now complain, staying completely on the shelf. It will not be used for gray squirrel control. So warfarin has gone and uh, contraceptives are not being considered anymore. So what are we left with? Well, the area is now narrowing down for gray squirrel control as well as our public perception of the cute and cuddly club. We're up against it, to be honest, or you're up against it. Um, we had another interesting point here. Uh, if, if anybody was uh, considering uh, how the development of this, we were looking at pine martins. Uh, I was fortunate enough when I used to live in the far north of Scotland, I did see pine martins. I saw plenty of wild cats um, and red squirrels, by the way. And here's an interesting point. Pay attention on this one. It's a great thing. Pine martins are great hunters. They are phenomenally fast. Call it a ferret on steroids. Incredible things through trees. Boom, gone. Incredible things. But I did see plenty of them. They hunted in the daytime. They hunted at night. Um, but they love to eat squirrels. A squirrel is a great delicacy to a pine martin. Red or greys, they're not fussy in colour. If they can catch one, they'll, they'll catch it and eat it. Um, but but pine martins don't exist in North America where the grey squirrels come from. So our native red squirrels, if they see a pine martin, it's a case of go, jump out of the way. And they, they will go as soon as they see any hint of a, of a pine martin, they're gone. However, greys, and here's the clue, they're from North America, they have no uh, in, in instinctive 
problem with pine martins. They think they're their pals up the trees. Oh, hello, you. Whereas pine martins just go bang. Now, that's great in theory. Great, Dave. Let's get a load of pine martins, release them. Um, and that's how grace for all, obviously in, in areas where, where there aren't reds, but let's release them, say, in, in the Midlands. Let's release them in woodland down there. Well, it's, it's, it's not going to work. It's, it's fraught with problems. Um, any reintroduction, as we're saying here, will sooner or later cause problems. The new kid on the block, if you like, and I'm, I'm sure our BASC man uh, has heard of this, is the, is the grey kite, uh, sorry, the red kite, uh, the grey kite, how can we, the, the red kite, um, their numbers now are absolutely soaring. And again, you've got, you know, the kite man in High Wycombe who's feeding them and people are going there with their iPhone 57s or whatever and photographing him. What we should be thinking is, hang on, hang on, hang on, we've been in this situation before. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm not saying reintroduction is a bad thing, but it's got to be on a measured basis. But pine martins will not happen for grace squirrel control. Rodenticides, warfarin only, is now out. Um, and so we, we are pretty well less now with our jolly old field craft and squirrel control, which is no bad thing for pest controllers who, like myself in the in the rural field, um, were, I was desperately interested in the field craft of, of squirrel control. More, as I've said to you time and time ago, I know you have, Dave, you've been whittling on for years. Um, field craft, in any, whether you're doing gray, gray squirrel control, brown rat control, cockroach control, whatever it is, the more that you learn about that animal, the better pest controller you will be, or wildlife manager if, we're, if you're looking at deer management, or fox control. Get into that animal's world. Don't think that you're better of them, because we're not better. We're not, we're not, goodness knows, put us outside even in the middle of the summer for a night and we'll be half dead, whereas these animals are, are tough. Get into their world. You're going to learn about them much, much better. So. Um, our considerations related to treatments. Um, oh, here's the thing. Yeah. Um, look, I'm, I'm hopeless on technology. I just can't seem to get it. I'm 62, 62 years old, Dave. <laughs> Pretty old than that. So, um, I can't get those slides to work. But I did print off because I knew I knew this would happen. And, and here is the one I was trying to show you on squirrel damage. That is purely grey squirrel damage. Okay. So that tree is now dead because it's been ring barked to a hell of a degree. And it's not just that tree, it's all of these in that ornamental area. So, uh, and I've got some more slides to show you in a minute. Um, right, so we're now down to, we've narrowed it down to either trapping, live traps and lethal traps, or shooting techniques. Now, we might not have, it's 10.36 already, for goodness sake, I can't believe it. But, okay, let's go on to our traditional method of tunnel trapping, uh, a lethal type of trap. We've got, as you should, please, please don't tell me that you don't understand this or don't this. You've always got to have a stop here to stop any uh, hedgehogs, for instance. Don't trap if there are stoats in the area and certainly do not trap if there are red squirrels about. End of. Do not do any form of trapping if there are reds there. You're asking me what the answer is. We haven't got much time here. But that's a lethal trap. And again, uh, the, the, the drawbacks with lethal trapping, it's, it's so obvious it's untrue. Once the animal goes in there, he's dead. Or well, hopefully dead. He, he may be, he may be uh, caught by a paw, but he's going to be uh, caught in there. So I prefer live trapping. We'll go on to uh, 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 lethal trapping, but I prefer live trapping. Now, being as we are uh, all professionals, we've all got our own uh, individual methods of what we like as control. Now, let me show you, if you've never seen this before, this is a real uh, eureka moment for you. Um, this is called an El Gico or El Gico, I'm never quite sure how you say it. Um, it's, a, it's a cage trap, basically, with a peanut feeder in. Now, the great thing about this trap as a live trap, you can obviously hang it on a, on a fence, uh, about sort of yay high if you like. Oh, hang on, here's one of my slides. About that high off the top of a fence, that's the sort of height you're looking at. And 
he goes into the trap because he's seen blue tits in there, great tits in there, all merrily feeding away. Isn't it a lovely day? Let's all feed in there. Our bold grey squirrel thinks, I'm having some of that. So he goes in through here, and all he does, watch carefully, in the blink of an eye, this is going to happen, his paw, his big squirrely paw goes on there. Look at the top. You all ready for this? And that's it. That is it. That is your grey squirrel caught. But check your traps. I say twice a day, actually. Why twice a day, Dave? Hey, remember? Huh? Hmm? That animal we all uh, forget to think, no, he can't do that. He won't do that. So check your traps twice a day. There's, there's two things about the grey. Um, if he's in a trap like this, it's quite interesting, really. I've trapped and shot many, 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 many thousands of these animals. But you will find if they're caught in a trap like this, they'll do one of two things. They'll either play dead because they're cunning. And by goodness, they will play dead sometimes. You know, you, you swear that something has, has, has happened to him inside the trap until you go up really close and then game over and he'll race around that trap. <laughs> I was going to say almost like a pie martins after him, but uh, they don't recognise him. But he's fast in there. Um, but he cannot get back out of that trap. Or, or let's just, I put, by the way, I put a smaller, a smaller type of ring on this type of trap. I just use a, you get a hog ring supplied with it. They're, they're cheap. These traps are cheap. And it's got your hog ring, which goes, you won't be able to get this wrong. It sets like so. Now, Nothing in the world is perfect. And occasionally you'll find that old squirrel, he may just hit it here and he gets outside of the trap and you think, oh, he's rumbled it. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. And that's why you'll have heard of my other talks. That's why I'm so for snaring as a, as a viable and great method of control, certainly on foxes. Because if this grey squirrel doesn't, get caught in that trap which probably happens on a sort of i don't know one in every 10 or so then he doesn't run off and think whoa, 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 whoa. all he thinks is ah there's some kind of mechanism on this which is stopping me when i go towards it so if you just reset it again same old squirrely that's run off with these big dangly bits will come back and that time bang you'll have it okay where are we at time was 10 40 are we doing are we doing all right everybody we all all okay um, right. Once he's caught in your trap, once he's caught in your trap, do not, if you want to talk about this later, by the way, we'll talk, I'm, I'm conscious we've got, do not use an air pistol. Standard air pistol. It's only pushing out six foot pound. Whatever else you do with a six foot pound air pistol, do not shoot a grey squirrel. Because you'll be very, very lucky if that does, it will actually, it will bounce off, believe you me. So uh, that's not your tool of the trade. What have we got then, Dave? <clears throat> we have air rifles. Great, they can't push out more than 12 foot pound. That's your absolute limit for use on them. But if you've, if somebody phones you, hey, there's a grey squirrel in that trap. And you may be experienced enough to run your grey squirrel into a sack. But this type of, of air rifle has got a, sil oh, a, a, a silencer, a sound moderator on the end. Now, that will, that will uh, shoot, but it won't shoot through the bars. So you're then left with an animal running around the trap. So if you are going to use an air rifle, make sure you, it's fit for the purpose and can actually go through the bar. Otherwise, you, you're that far away from an animal going around around like so. Just a quick, a quick point. Um, uh, if you're using cage traps, remember our, oh, I've got two traps to show you here. If you're using cage traps, I'll be back in a second, don't worry. If you're using cage traps, peg them down. Why do you want to peg them down, Dave? Because grey squirrels will roll that trap away. Sometimes two or three hundred, they work, they will. They will. Where you put your cage trap down will not be. Um, if they've learned, if they can see how to tilt it, and you haven't secured it down, preferably with with wire tethers or big long, not plastic stakes, because I'll chew through it. That trap will be gone. Here's another great, probably the best lethal trap I've I've come across in a good many years. 
Again, it's by your old Geeko. I've got no affiliation with them. They don't pay me any money or anything, but this is probably the strongest and most powerful pound for pound. I'm not setting any traps here today for your health and safety as well. I don't want you thinking, oh yes, we can set these traps. These things go smack. And then this is very, very powerful. But believe you me, that's an El Geco. And it's a great trap. You can put it up a tree. You can put it on the floor if you want to. Make sure that your, your funnel end here is completely closed down so that other, not non targets can't get into there. Um, or you may be, look, look, here's another salient point. Uh, if you're pretty inventive, I don't actually like traps on the ground anymore. They must all be covered by law, as I'm sure you must know, but I'm actually not a great fan of traps on the ground. There are more animals running on the ground that we don't want to catch than, the, than there are up trees, which is, if you're in the right part of the world, hopefully is only your gray squirrels. But so, this is an old letterbox holder. It's a letterbox holder with a Femmark IV inside the trap and a little hole at the top. And once that's screwed onto a tree, uh, it's, it's a perfect way, far better in, in my humble opinion, than any trap which is on the ground. Now, here's another thing for you. This is a set Mark IV trap. And I want you to look and learn again. Put your ear trumpets on if you'd like me. Um, this is an old Mark IV trap and it's in a set position. Yes, it will catch a squirrel. I don't use this trap, uh, this, these fen traps anymore because they do wear out. The difference in power in that trap, or, oh, bear with me, you can use, look, some other people will say, I love such and such a trap. I love such, I'm, I'm, I'm of an age now, when I started in this industry, we used to use cyanide, for goodness sake, and zinc phosphide on, on rat control. So give me a bit of a break. If I've used this stuff, you know, for years, it's because I like it and I'm too old to change. Right, what we have here is a Fen Mark IV. If you're using a Fen Mark IV, always have it pegged down. Make sure that the thing cannot be carried away, even if it's inside your tunnel trap in whatever way, shape, or form. If your squirrel chew through the box, if he's caught by a paw, which does happen, it does happen. However good a trapper you are, you will not you will not catch every gray squirrel every time bang around the head. It's a nice theory. To be honest, that's why I prefer this one. I'll just take the lid off here again. This one, with because the squirrel goes down, head forward into the trap, rather than, and you'll get a better success rate with that. Um, but a brand new, in my humble opinion, and I don't know anybody that's done any tests or anything to this, but that brand new Mark IV trap, do not, do not set it without somebody very, very experienced shows you, unless you, you've got a penchant for having broken fingers. But that will have so much more, I said, look at me, that's just, I'm, I'm not going to set it, um, but you get the idea. It's got a safety catch on for a very good purpose as well, a very good reason. If you think you're better than the trap, well, sooner or later you're going to get into trouble. My point is, my point is, this trap, must be, must be 50, 60, 70% more efficient as a brand new trap. And by the way, here's a quick thing for you. If it doesn't say a FEN, F-E-N-N, on the trap, if you ever get the chance to go to FEN, uh, the Phoenix Works, fantastic place, wonderful place, wonderful man. This is a British made FEN trap. If it's got a FEN with one letter N, or if it doesn't say made, uh, sorry, Mark four on it, it probably is a cheap inferior import, of which there are thousands of mole traps suppliers. But that's another issue we need to go into at another time. So that is a good, powerful trap. It's legal for gray squirrel control when it's covered. We can also use a Mark VI. That's a brand new Mark VI, even more powerful. In my humble opinion, it's a great trap. It's probably overpowered brand new for, for gray squirrel control. And of course, if your tunnels are close for your Mark IV trap, a Mark VI is going to need a lot more room on the top of the trap. And by the way, if you're using these traps, you need to have total clearance. Bury your trap into the ground is a good idea. I don't know if you can, you know, sort of like so. So you've got clearance on the top. So if it catches on the roof, then a grey squirrel, well, you, you'll get him eventually. But don't, you know, your first chance is your best. Natalie, you want you, you? I can say hello. Hello. I'm just I'm, giving you a five-minute warning. I've got so day. much to 
talk about. I've no, no, five, you got a good five minutes. I just thought I'd give you a wave. Oh, can five hours? No, no, no. no. Everybody's gone. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's gone home. So yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. So yeah, um, great, great traps those. But you may have your own preferred type of trap. But this animal, by the way, is very, 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 very tough. Um, your, uh, if we are, you've got your 12 foot, sorry, six foot pound on an air pistol, which isn't enough. You've got your 12 foot pound on a, on a uh, air rifle, which most people use. Whatever uh, method of control you're using, make sure, particularly if you are shooting, do risk assessments. And with your risk assessment, it is completely different in a rural area to an urban area. You may just be doing the culling of one in a trap with an air rifle if your risk assessment allows it and if you feel it's okay. But in uh, other areas, rural areas, uh, shotguns, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to show you that now. Shotguns are great if they're fired into the trees, but it's getting very, very specialist work. The reason I'm saying that is our what we were saying earlier on, our uh, options are narrowed now. So, uh, you know, in rural areas, that's great. And if you were using, which is probably the only other uh, type of, of, of uh, weapon I can think of, a 2-2 rimfire is a very, very dangerous round. It's probably, in my humble opinion, over, I don't know how many decades, probably the most... Um, lethal and underestimated bullet there is. This is a, a 2-2 bullet. It's, it's a frangible three-part bullet. This travels at a subsonic speed, just below the sp speed of sound. And it's very accurate. It's good, it's good on gray squirrels in rural areas only, up to, what would you say? Let's, I'll, I'll, I'm not sure. I'll call it 50 yards, 40, 50 yards. Any more than you might say to somebody, well, I can do it at 70 yards. Well, good luck to you because you've got more chance of wounding than that. The closer, the better when, you're, uh, when your weapon is, uh, is totally zeroed. This bullet is a frangible bullet. I know, Dave, you've just said that. Yeah, but this is important because it splits into three. It won't ricochet. A standard 2-2 bullet has got a hell of a, as we say about underestimating them, it will ricochet all over the place. Hits any hard fern object, ding, off it goes. This is a frangible bullet, splits into three. If it hits a squirrel, it goes into three at phenomenal speed. And yet, rather like with mink, actually, that's the only, the other really tough kid on the block. Grey squirrels will quite often still run so they're dead, probably like chaps in the war. They would run with that bang into them. So it's phenomenal how tough these animals are. Right, uh, okay. Um, you, you're great squirrel. Just a quick one here for, for your newbies here. New people into pest control. Great, you've got your squirrel. You've done it in your trap, however way you've done it. Hopefully in a, in a rural, it, sorry, in an urban area, that it's a lethal trap and that squirrel is dead and you've done all your risk assessments and you've had your slime fall. If it's live in a trap, how really are you going to kill that squirrel? If you're an experienced, or if you've got the Tufty Club next door, or further down the road who've seen your vehicle, how are you going to kill that, that squirrel? You're certainly not going to drown it. You know you're not going to drown it. But if you're doing any other lethal control, there will, unless you're clever enough to drop it into a sack, and which is which is. Uh, legal and humane and hot and knocking it in a sack with a, a big priest i don't mean a religious priest i mean a priest um that will obviously work but if you're shooting it remember you'll have blood uh, coming out of that trap now these are the what i was saying earlier on these are the things we're going to be talking about that's not you know people don't sort of say hey great there's there's a load of blood there people don't like it so make sure you have means, whether it's a blanket underneath, whether the cage is completely covered, which is a good method. Take it away covered if you want. If you're comfortable doing that, but watch your fingers because those squirrels, gee whiz, they'll bite you. If they can bite you, I tell you what, it'll be, uh, you know, um, are, we, are we nearly done, Natalie? Sorry. Yeah, so we've got, we've got a question in the Q&A bit, and uh, I just thought I'd give us some time for that. But, you know, if you've got to finish off, just finish uh, off. And then... no, very, quick, very quickly, if you do, I don't... Uh, 
skinning those squirrels, killing and, and selling them to game dealers and eating. They're marvellous food if that's your penchant. Wood pigeon is seriously good, but grey squirrels, if you do sell them, just remember it is a food, uh, it's a food product you're selling and you need to be licensed and registered with your local environmental health department because you're selling a food. So don't just think you can skin them. And there are methods of skinning grey schools. Don't think you can just trap them and sell them onto game dealers without being registered as a licensed game dealer, a food handler. OK. How many squirrels do you need to fill you up? Because they're pretty small in terms of the, uh, hey, the strap. None. Them. None. Absolutely. Like them. I'll, take, I'll take a biggest plate of wood pigeon. I love wood pigeon. Yeah. yeah, a bit of a burgundy is fantastic, but um, no, never. Yeah, no, no, not for you. But apparently, you. but apparently, you know, if you go to a London restaurant or somewhere, or, or anywhere in the country, it's got to be politically correct. I know they're um, they're very, they're very sought after. People want to eat them. Good luck to you, you know. Something different, isn't it? Um, well, the, the question we've got with um, from Darren here is, um, can yes. someone get the license from the Canadian guy for the Canier two thousand and start supplying them again as he feels it's the best trap for greys? Um. Uh, can you, well, he needs to go on to, it's changing all the time, Natalie. He wants to go on to gov.uk, uh, gov.uk, and they will, they've got a, a finite list of approved traps. Yep, spring trap approval now, order, isn't it? That's yep. right, you've got it. Now, I like I said earlier, I make no apologies for it. I've never used the can yet. Probably I've never needed to, you know, but, it, but have a look on there. That will tell you. And remember, people, you've got England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland. Uh, uh, Northern Ireland, uh, it, it is different. In fact, in the in the province of, of Ireland, completely different again. So make sure that your register your regulations apply to the country that you are working in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good advice. That's it. We forget that because some 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 people work cross border, don't they? You know, they may be close to the Welsh border or the Scottish border, and they might have to travel uh, back and forth. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Did you say good advice there, Natalie? I did say good advice. Nobody's ever said that to me before. So thanks for that. Well, you, you've got um, you've got an online course with us coming up. Uh, I say coming up, but uh, on the yes, uh, yes. Uh, thank you for that. There is an online course. Obviously, we've we've skimmed over, but I hope we've done some entertaining, inform informative stuff today. But obviously, everything here then will be done so much more in detail about grey squirrel control. Yes, and that's right. on the. You've got the date there, I think, Natalie, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's on it's online at the moment. It's called um, the non native pests and their control online yes, class, but, classroom and the dates are the 16th of november so yeah a fair amount of time for people to register if they want to hear you more dave and i can't believe every single 219 people here will be clicking on that <laughs> button so you're going to be unindated all right no, I, i'd have been more sure i reserved if i were not well I, for, actually we've got a, a we've got um when, what date did you just give there uh, tw um, 23rd of November, I want to say, did yeah, I? Yeah, but we've yeah, got one of the events. We are still looking at um, another one, a, a, a non native uh, somewhere in September, if you're interested. Check out the dates, but you know, we will do a, a much more in depth um, certificated, we must say, BPCA certificated course. Very yeah. fabulous. There is one question that's popped up in the Q&A. If you can just yes. have a little typey typey of that one, that'd be amazing. Um, yes. But we do need to just break uh, for a little comfort break because, yeah, people will probably want their coffee and tea. But as always, yes. so entertaining, Dave. We love oh, seeing thank you. you here. And thank you. Um, yeah, hopefully good luck with the online course that you're doing with us as well. I know you'll get lots. So but thank you again. Yeah. Can I just say to Nick Nicholas uh, Alderson, um, I've just been to, been to Jersey, what a lovely part of the world you live in. And it's, yeah, how fortunate are you to have reds? You can take a comfort break for as long as you want now. Because yeah. <laughs> no graves there and a lovely part Great. of the world. Well done, you. Great. Thanks, Dave, so much. We will see you soon. You will. Thank you very much. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.